Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel or if you are new here, welcome. I'm so happy you're here. My name is Amanda and today I have a brand new Clean With Me marathon. But of course, I am not only sharing cleaning in this video, we are going to be cleaning, decluttering, organizing. We are also getting some DIY house projects done around our house that we moved into almost two years ago. I cannot believe it's been that long now. And finally, we are going to be finishing this video off with a full on pantry makeover up at my mom's house. We are doing everything ourselves and we're doing it all on a budget and I'm sharing it all with you. Now, if you are new to my channel or you are not familiar with the Clean With Me Marathon, what it is is actually an idea that my husband came up with several years ago, like three or four years ago at this point. And basically I am putting together several of my recent favorite videos and packing it all into one super long, super motivating video so that you can just put this up on your TV, tablet, or phone and clean right along with me or do whatever project you're working on today. And that way you don't have to be interrupted by searching around for a new video. You can just let this one play through and keep that consistent motivation headed your way. Now here on my channel, I share tons of real life cleaning motivation as a mom of three. And here we do not shy away from those real life moments. We share it all just as a reminder that we are all so much more alike than we realize. But I don't only share cleaning, I also share lots of recipes and homemaking videos on my channel and we also do lots of DIY projects, lots of home makeovers, and of course decluttering and organizing sprinkled in there as well. So if all of those things sound interesting to you and something that might help you stay motivated or just have a friend to hang out with while you work on those same things in your own home, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. If you are not already, I would love for you to join this YouTube family and without further ado, let's get into it. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I have some amazing motivation for you because my home is in dire need of some deep cleaning. So we are going to be focusing on the kitchen and then also in the living room. We're gonna go ahead and get things all nice and tidy so we have a good blank slate to start deep cleaning. And then we are going to move from top to bottom and clean everything in between. You guys know I'm not gonna shy away from showing you all the real life moments. So my messy house is your motivation today. Let's go ahead and jump on into it. I wanna hear you say it. Yeah. today is to be deep cleaning. I still do need to get everything nice and tidy. My first goal is just to very, very quickly surface level clean everything and then we'll start pulling out the big stuff. I'm 
I am so happy that y'all are here today. We are going to be getting motivated, getting everything all set up for the week, and it just feels good to be taking control of your life. You guys know, at least for us, last year was a bit of a hard year, and I know for a lot of you it was the same. So this year we have been very intentional in doing everything we can to make this an amazing year. And something so exciting happened this last week. We actually hit 400,000 subscribers here on the channel. You guys, that is incredible to me and seriously unbelievable, so surreal. Some of you have been here since the beginning, some of you have been here for a few years, and then of course some of you are brand new to the channel, but no matter when you came into the picture, I am so happy that you're here. This channel was actually created as a hobby and something that I was just doing for myself after I struggled with postpartum depression with our third son, and I could never have imagined being here today. All of it would not be possible without you guys, so I am just so grateful for for you and I did want to do something to celebrate so we are going to be picking one winner to receive a box of all of my favorite goodies that will be valued at about $200 and I am so excited to pick one of you to win this. I will have all the details for that down in the description box, but basically you just have to be subscribed to the channel and then leave a comment on this video and all the videos throughout February, and then I will be picking a lucky winner to receive all of my favorites. So definitely make sure that you get entered into that giveaway, and like I mentioned, all that information will be down in the description box. I know I always clean my sink right after I wash all my dishes, but we are going to be like scrubbing the sink down in just a little bit. I quickly wipe down the counters and then I will show you all the products I'm gonna be using today to deep clean my kitchen. If you see the towel that I'm drying my dishes with, that is one of the bloom towels that I always talk about. I love them for so many reasons. One, they're super absorbent, they're really large. They also come in so many different colors and designs. And I wanted to let you know, they're actually having a brand new launch next week. Whenever they have their launches, they sell out very quickly. So I wanted to give you a little heads up on that. That will be happening next week and I'll have all that information down below for you. All of that gunk in there we are going to clean out all of that area too but I am gonna do just a quick wipe down real quick Let me know in the comments if you have already started deep cleaning this year. So far, my focus has really been decluttering, homemaking, just getting the year set up for success. Also, we've been finishing up some home makeovers. As you may have seen, we shared our bathroom makeover last week, and in the coming weeks, we'll be sharing a new house projects video. So our focus has kind of been all over the place. However, it does feel so amazing to just really start deep cleaning everything. And I'm actually looking forward to spring cleaning where I can go through the entire house and get it spotless from top to bottom. All right, everything is looking nice and clean, surface level clean right now, but I do have a list on my phone. And I always get questions whenever I share my list. I do my list the same way every single time. This is just the Reminders app on iPhone. It comes with the iPhone. It doesn't cost anything. If you have iPhone, definitely check it out. So we have tidied the kitchen. And then I just kind of want to work from top to bottom, of course. So we're going to be like wiping down the cabinets and the kick plates. Those are terrible. But also, I was talking to Kyle last night and he is saying that we are on track to refinish our kitchen. We are going to be keeping all the same cabinets. We just need to like refresh the hinges and everything because some of them like don't even close all the way. And then we're also going to be painting the cabinets. So we need to get them really clean anyway. We're going to probably do that in the next like two months, but in the next month I'm going to be really starting to like plan everything out and get everything set up. So anyway, I'm excited for a bunch of reasons, but that is definitely one of them. I'm also going to clean like on top of the fridge, all the appliances, like microwave, oven, stove. And then I'm going to get into like those little nooks and crannies, like inside the 
crevices of the sink and in the stove, like on the sides of the stove, and then also down in the garbage disposal. I'm not looking forward to it, but it needs to be done. I'm also going to deep clean like our trash can and all that. And then of course I'm gonna do like the blinds and things and then we'll kind of move into the living room. And anything else that I come across that needs to be cleaned, I will just clean it. So let me go grab the supplies that I need and then we'll get going. Real me to get it going, open me up. Sweet talking like you mean it, but you're making it so complicated. I hate it. Every time I get too close, you push me away. Don't want to stick, telling me you don't want any obligations and how you hate them. I'm sure as we go, I will remember like, oh yeah, I need this and that, you know, different kind of cleaners. But just to show you a few of the things that we're going to be using today, I am going to be using some Bon Ami. This is one of my favorite cleaners to clean like stoves, ovens, things like that. It's slightly abrasive, but not enough to scratch anything. And so it's just perfect for that. It's also extremely affordable. So definitely check that one out. This is the Caldrea multi-surface cleaner and it's a concentrate. So every time I use it, I use like maybe a cap full. And so it really does last you a very long time. And Mrs. Myers does have another all-purpose concentrate. They just have different scents. This is my favorite scent and they discontinued it years ago. So I've been like really <laughs> just using this so sparingly. But this is what I'm going to use for like wiping down the cabinets. I'm just gonna fill up a bowl with water, hot water, and then a cap full of this, and then kind of wipe down the cabinets and everything to clean the garbage can and you know, various other stuck on messes. I'm gonna use my Bissell Steam Shot. I've had this for years. It just steams everything. These are knee pads <laughs> for when I'm down on the ground, like scrubbing especially all the kick plates and things. This saves your knees. Get yourself some cleaning knee pads. They're amazing. I also have this little tool. I just got them on Amazon. It actually came in a pack of like four or five or six or something, but it's just basically a scrubber pad with a handle and so it's really nice. This cleaning tool, I got this and used it in my shower, but you can use it like all over the place and it just turns on and then scrubs and it has different heads. It also has a few other heads, but these are like my go-tos. So anyway, these are my cleaning supplies, the bulk of them that we're gonna be using today. And of course, everything that I use will be left down in the description box. I'll link it down below. Let's make our solution, start scrubbing down the cabinets. So you know what we need to do before we officially start is I need to show you how bad things have gotten. It's just, you know, out of sight, out of mind. You do the surface level cleaning and you kind of forget to get really deep onto like those extra areas. So remember, this is a judgment-free zone. I'm sharing just to let you know you're not alone for a little bit of motivation, but be kind. I'm definitely not gonna deny that these are very dirty. I kind of wipe them down here and there, but it just, if you don't keep up with them, they don't stay great. There are a lot of spots where like the paint is just really worn down. There's a lot of stuff that we need to do, but this is one of the steps is just really making sure that we clean them very well. Don't deny you are like a mark to the flame. Okay, so this is kind of what I was meaning. Like these are clean now. They are scrubbed down. 
and you can just see like there's so many cracks in them there's so much paint worn off they're just in rough shape so we're trying to see if we can do this a cheaper way without having to you know like reface them or anything but I don't know we'll see another thing is when they look like this I'm way less motivated to clean them and take more care of them and also unless if you're getting up close and personal like they just always kind of look like this and so when they're messy like half the time you can't even tell if it's actually a mess or if it's just you know some scraped off paint or or something else on it so i don't know i'm like so beyond excited for our kitchen makeover i can't really imagine it right now because it's been like this for so long but i'm excited <laughs> This cleaning mixture works so crazy good, but it is so funny with YouTube videos because this part of my deep cleaning to-do list took me like 45 minutes or an hour to wipe down all the baseboards, all the cabinets, like everything. And in the video, it just looks so effortless. It looks like it took me, you know, all of five minutes to get it all done. But I guess that's why we love these videos because they are super motivating. It just shows all that motivation happening very quickly. But if you are deep cleaning today and you end up needing a little bit longer motivation, you can pop up one of my marathon videos up on the screen and that may even outlast your entire cleaning session. moment of truth right here the only reason that the top of our fridge wasn't terribly dirty this time is because it's actually fairly new to us we didn't purchase our fridge new or anything we actually found it from facebook marketplace but we did clean it all up and get it put in a few months back and we actually shared that in a house projects video where we got everything i think from that whole entire video from Facebook Marketplace and we just kind of fixed it all up and made it really nice and you would never even know that we got those items used. So if you haven't seen that video, I will link it down below for you along with all of our other house projects videos where you can see all the different things that we've done since moving into our Arizona home. All right, we have maybe the most annoying part of deep cleaning today done. I Hey, mostly the bottom ones like the top ones are never as dirty also you don't have to be on your hands and knees but we have all the cabinets wiped down now we're going to start tackling all the appliances so I'm gonna start kind of working on the oven this top oven <laughs> needs some love this bottom one does not get as much use usually mostly like for holidays or we might double up on cooking pizzas or something but we're gonna start working on the appliances also getting all this gunk out of around the edge of the stove and then working on the sink. This is actually one area that I don't neglect terribly. <laughs> and so even though it does look dirty, like I do clean this, I don't know, every couple months maybe. But I'm gonna start by taking out the grates. I'll spray those down and leave those in the sink. And then I'll start kind of letting everything set up in here. And then once all of the yucky stuff has kind of lifted away a little bit and kind of softened, then we'll scrub it down. I 
have a few different ways of cleaning my oven, but I think the way I'm gonna do it today is actually with the Dawn Power Wash spray and the Bon Emi cleaner. That way the dish spray can really work to like loosen everything up and then I can use the Bon Emi to actually like scrub anything up. Here you can see me using that power scrubber. Now I will say it is not necessary. However, it definitely does take away some of that elbow grease that you would need to be giving for this situation. So I definitely am grateful for it. I do use it kind of all around our house. I use it on my kitchen and the stove and oven. I also use it in our bathroom and just various other places. And one of my favorite things about it is that it's rechargeable so you don't have to worry about batteries or anything like that. I cannot get all of these stuck on messes off since the oven is original to the house, but I got them clean as best I could. And yes, I still have my knee pads on for now. I just kept forgetting that I had them on. But anyway, for the racks, I'm just using the Dawn dish spray and that worked really great just to loosen up all of the baked on messes off of the racks. And then I just scrubbed them down a little bit and rinsed them clean. again a lot of ways to clean a microwave but it's not like even though it doesn't look great it's actually not the worst it's been like it's not really kicked on so I am just going to do again the Dawn power wash to spray and I'm gonna wipe this all out our microwave I would say is 95% used by our oldest son the rest of us don't use it a ton you can also just use like a regular spray if your microwave isn't bad or if you clean it pretty often but the Dawn dish spray just does really good like getting rid of all of the grease and any oils and things like that. It just really breaks it all down. Whereas sometimes the cleaning sprays don't really break down the oil as much. So that's kind of why I'm choosing to not just spray it down, but also like use a sponge and scrub it with the soap. To clean the outside of the microwave and actually all of our stainless steel appliances, I am just using my E-Cloth Duo, which is the E-Cloth general purpose cloth used with just water, followed by a dry glass and polishing cloth. I always call these my magical cloths. They do amazing work with just water. Next, we're gonna start working on the stove and I have no idea like why I didn't even think of this. I'm like trying to think back and I do not think, like I can't remember a time where I actually cleaned underneath here and it is greasy and really needs the, it's not good. So we're gonna tackle that today. 
before we clean the stove. That way all that nastiness can drip onto the stove and then we can clean that off. I've been out on the streets where the lights are red. I've been hiding the world safely in my head. I was a little bit worried about these grates and underneath the microwave, but I am very happy to report that the CLR grease cleaner worked like a champ, cutting through all that grease. And you can be the judge, but to me, it made everything look almost like new. But it starts with me and you. So I have my Bissell steam shot all heated up. It's just been plugged in. My plan for this is to actually like steam shot in this crevice and kind of loosen up the bits. And I have some toothpicks. So I'm just gonna start like kind of loosening that up and then scraping all the gunk out and hopefully that'll do the job. You held me back when I tried to move on from your life So you stole my life with clarity So hold me back this was so disgusting i just could not believe all the gunk and ugh, disgusting bits that came out from the sides of our stove so definitely something that i'm going to be paying a lot more attention to in the future i have never seen it get this bad but for whatever reason it was rough There are honestly so many different ways to clean things as I'm sure you've found whatever you're on the internet. There's like a thousand ways to clean your stove, tons of ways to clean your sink and your bathtub and you know, all this stuff. And I think a lot of times, a lot of them really work well. It really just depends on your own preferences. And then also I would say sometimes it's just fun to kind of switch things up. The Bon Ami and the Dawn dish spray definitely seem to be my go-to on this day. But if you're feeling like you're in a rut, definitely changing up your cleaning supplies can can really make a difference in just making things feel a little bit less mundane. Once we get our kitchen makeover done, we will be doing a DIY backsplash. But until then, I just have these cutting boards kind of behind the stove. One, they serve a purpose of helping protect the back wall from all the splatter and everything when you're cooking. And two, I just kind of like the look of them for now. We are moving right along over to the sink and take a mental note of the before on these drains. We are going to be getting them so super shiny, but make sure that you keep in mind how they looked before because it's gonna be like a total 180. Mm. 
Now before tackling the sink itself, I actually just wanted to clean all of my dishwashing station and then I'm just spraying everything down with Dawn dish spray as well as using my Bissell steam shot just to help release any gunk that's stuck in the crevices of the sink and honestly this worked so so well. This little OXO toothbrush like scrubber came in so handy for these tiny little crevices and it just made the sink drain so, so shiny. If you are still using an old toothbrush and you don't have one of these, I would definitely recommend checking into them just because they have a bit harsher bristles and they just seem to get it a lot cleaner than like an old toothbrush does. hope you guys can see the difference in that it was like getting a little bit grubby and so <laughs> scrubbing that out and just taking a little extra time the sink looks so much nicer now i am going to be cleaning out the garbage disposal it's very convenient if your garbage disposal gasket or whatever this is pulls out that little black rubber thing if it pulls out then you can pull it out scrub it clean inside really easy if you can't, like I can't, then you're just gonna have to get in there and scrub it out the old fashioned way. It will help your garbage disposal not stink so much. I hate this, but it, it's good. It's a good thing. thing I want to do is just help the garbage disposal and sink drain a little bit more and add in some essential oils. My favorite oil that I've used for years and years is Simply Earth. You can, you see able to get them on Amazon, but I think they just sell them from their website. So I'll have a link down below, but they are really high quality oils and they're not ones that will break the bank. So I love these and this one's just spearmint, but I kind of change it out. We are nearing the end of the day. I mean, we still have some time, like I need to start making dinner and things like that. The kitchen, seriously, in person, it just is kind of shining right now. It feels so good. We are going to do one more thing before the end of the day and then I'll have to pick back up tomorrow with the living room because clearly we didn't even get to that. It's fine though. It just takes how long it takes. We are going to uh, tackle this very messy, <laughs> Not really beautiful trash can. I thought that we had something special. I thought I handled this so well. I know we had the right intentions. But somehow it came to an end. I'm mostly just gonna like steam clean this. One, because it can sanitize things, and two, it just makes it all a lot easier. <laughs>
for a garbage can, I am using the steam cleaner for about 90% of it. And then I'm also spraying my multi-purpose spray just to wipe all the messes away. And again, that steam cleaner came in so handy. If you've been seeing them over the last few years and you haven't ever gotten one, pick one up for your home next time you have the opportunity because this little guy is useful in so many different spaces. Hello, hello, and welcome back to a brand new day. Yesterday we got the kitchen all deep cleaned. It is feeling so nice in there. Today we are going to be focusing on the living room. Also, I'm gonna work on like the windows and blinds over here, but mostly we'll be in the living room and I really wanna focus on the furniture and the carpet. I also want to deep clean our vacuum. It's been far too long since I've taken it all apart and cleaned the filter and all that stuff and it really runs so much better once I do that. So once we use it today, I'm gonna get it all cleaned up. That way it'll have time to dry before I need to use it again. But there is a good bit that we need to get done today so let's go ahead and get into it. So to clean the blinds and the windows, I'm gonna use a few different things. This is the duster that I'm gonna use to get like the actual dust off of the blinds. This is from Full Circle. And this one is reusable. You can toss the duster part in the wash. You can buy replacement pieces. I've had this for years and I love it so much. It's just like really nice quality. A regular e cloth, this is just a general purpose cloth. And then to clean the actual windows themselves, I'm going to be using other e cloth products. So again, I'm going to use a different general purpose e cloth. And to dry it, you could use a glass and polishing cloth, but when I'm doing a lot of windows, I actually like to use this. It's the e cloth Window Genie, and it's just like a thicker material. And so basically, you can get like a lot of windows with it, clean or dried with it and it like just doesn't get soaked as quickly as one of their glass and polishing cloths would. That's like my favorite way to clean windows when I have a lot to clean all at once. So these are my window cleaning products for the day. Tell me about that little boy playing in the kindergarten. My sliding doors get so messy and they just do not get cleaned often enough. But it really is awesome once we do clean them, they look so much better and it's something we actually do notice a lot. But let me know, what is that thing in your house that needs a lot more attention than you give it. I mean, being honest, there are like a lot of things in our house that way, but my sliding glass doors definitely fall into that category. Okay, so we are going to do things a little bit differently in the living room because I need to do the blinds and the windows and everything, but the couch is like not all the way pushed up against the wall, but it's close to the wall. And I also am going to be wanting to move all the furniture anyway so that I can really deep clean the entire rug and everything, or at least slow vacuum and all that stuff, get all the stuff pulled out of it. So I think the way that it's just going to make more sense is if I go ahead and just pull all of the furniture out of the living room and then I'll be able to get to the windows easy. Then I can get to everything that I need to easily and then we'll kind of go from there. I've been trying hard to keep my cool But when you're near, there's nothing that I can do When you're walking in, I know it's true Would have been a lot easier to do if Kyle were home, but it's fine. I got it done. Now we're going to tackle these blinds. There's like so much dirt and then we'll just keep checking things off the list.
Let me know in the comments what is the weather like where you live. I kind of hate to say this because I know some of you are still in the dead of winter, but here in Arizona, we are beginning to see spring weather and I am really itching to get outside and deep clean the patio and front porch and like all the outdoor areas. We actually did a big patio makeover when we first moved in the house. And then last year we kind of gave it a refresh and changed things up a little bit because we ended up using a lot of the furniture and things that we had over at my sister's makeover. That was the boho makeover series. But definitely stay tuned because I'm sure I'll be sharing an outdoor cleaning video soon. Next up, we are going to slow vacuum our rug. I have done this for years and years and years, but basically you just want to run your vacuum over your floor as you normally would. Go ahead and empty the vacuum canister, and then you are literally just going to slowly, like very painfully slowly vacuuming your floors, specifically carpets and rugs and things like that. And it will just give your vacuum time to suck all the extra dirt and dust and debris out of the fibers of your carpet. It will actually make your carpet last longer and it just makes it so much fluffier and so much cleaner. I would definitely suggest doing a corded vacuum just because this is going to take a little bit of time and it's also just going to have the power. This is my Shark Apex Uplight. I have had this vacuum for years. I actually don't even know if Shark makes it anymore, but I love this one. I will link it down below if I can find it. And if not, I'll link something that I find out is similar. But anyway, we're gonna get this rug looking and feeling so much better. But first, I'm going to grab a quick smoothie because it's like lunchtime and I haven't had anything all day and I'm starving. So I'm gonna get a smoothie real quick and then we'll get back to it. in the country I can say yes to that whatever way you want me I'll learn it all and I'll adapt even if I changed up everything except my name we will still be fighting cause I am still the same I wanna me to be somebody else another me that doesn't need your help but if I'm honest I don't think we got it Okay, this is the second container of hair and dirt and dust and everything. Multiple containers plus the original vacuum and it gets vacuumed like every single day. So there is a lot of traffic in here with all the pets and the kids and us and everybody, but slow vacuum your rugs, you will not regret it. Also, I did want to get your opinions or like your experience, if you would share your experience with me. This rug is not a shag rug, but it's also not like crazy thin it needs to be shampooed i'm trying to figure out if i can do it myself without ruining the rug we did have a spill the other day and i had to shampoo it and that area is like wavy now and so i do need to try the iron trick on that i think you can like put a towel down and then iron it and hopefully that will loosen up the fibers and let it lay flat again but my worry is that I shampoo the rug and then the whole thing is wavy and I just don't know if that's gonna happen or what. So before I do anything and like ruin a rug, I would love to get your guys' experience. I can take this outside and do it on our driveway or we can do it inside, but I don't wanna damage the floors and I don't want to ruin the rug. So let me know what you think. But now we're gonna go ahead, move back the furniture. I'm gonna vacuum out the couches and I might kind of rearrange some things again today. We have had it this way for a long time, but if I don't like it, I'll just actually wait for Kyle to be home and then he can help me. This is kind of how we had it laid out in the living room. It's just fun to kind of move things around and rearrange things, so. I think we're gonna go with this for a little while. I'm sure it'll change back eventually. You are the one that I just need to feel love. You saved me from the broken house that I built. You took me in with open arms and I still want you back, back, want you back, back, back. Some say that love don't hurt, but I got you stuck in my memory. 
I have no idea how in the world all this mess got under here. I mean, I vacuum our couches daily. We never ever eat on the sofas. <laughs> <laughs> okay, obviously I'm joking. Obviously we live here, you know, hello, it's us. We live in this house. We definitely live real life over here, but it's okay. It's getting cleaned up and that's all that matters. I want you back, back, want you back, back, back Some say that love don't hurt But I got you stuck in my memory Some say that hearts come first But they've never known what it's like to be In love at 20 years old We kiss in the rain till we catch a cold Deep cleaning is so funny because You can clean intensely for hours and hours and then you look back and it looks like you have done nothing. So these couches are like a great example of that. I spent about 20 minutes cleaning them out. And then once I was done cleaning them and putting them back together, they look exactly the same as I did before I spent all that time cleaning. But it's okay, we know the truth and you know, that validates our efforts. Plus I'm filming it for you guys. So I have some proof that I actually clean these couches. I love these chairs. They're super comfy. They do get dirty. However, I don't really mind because they clean up really, really easily. We're gonna go ahead and get these looking like new. I went by your house, what a big mistake. Before a while I thought that I wouldn't break. I need something else to So this little machine is the upgrade to the little green machine and I actually love all the upgrades that they made. I would not say it's worth it to run out and upgrade and change machines if you already have the old one that works great. However, if you are in the market for one of these little machines and you don't already have one, definitely go with the new one. I have personally had both machines and honestly, they're both great, but the new one is really amazing and I just love all the upgrades that they made. This is a super cool feature. So to clean the hose, it actually comes with this piece right here and you just plug it in and then you press the button and it just starts like cleaning the hose for you. So close to being done. Everything's looking really nice except the hard floors. So I am going to go ahead and just use the Roborock Dyad Pro. This will vacuum the floors and also mop at the same time. So it'll be looking real nice. Just dramatic that we still could 
started the fight We came to an end I put up the fence But do you really mean that this is the end? One, two, three years of silence Then four, five, six Still another thing When my hair gets green I lose my shape I still be missing you The last thing we're gonna do is actually clean out basically everything out of this vacuum. If you don't have the same vacuum at home, that's fine. A lot of pieces are like very similar. I've done this several times and it really cleans so much better once you do this. So for this one, I'm just going to take the top canister out and then inside there is the filter. And then this I can't get wet, so this piece I'm just going to be like wiping down but we will pull this part in. So I'm gonna pull this off and I'm actually going to shake this off over the trash can. And then I'm just going to like rinse these out and kind of start to spray them off and let them sit for a few minutes while I work on this other one. Yeah, this is so gross, look at that. There's another side of you trying to break through able to tell the truth no one else can see when you're deep cleaning your vacuum, do not be afraid to use lots of soap, especially on the vacuum filters and rollers. You will be amazed if you don't be shy with the soap and you scrub them down, you will get them looking so, so good. how that looks now isn't that incredible like you can still see a slight bit of staining here and there but so much cleaner so definitely do not forget to clean out your vacuum but something that i like to do is add a few drops of essential oil onto the vacuum it will just help your vacuum smell a little bit nicer you want these to all be fully fully dry before you put them back together so i probably will honestly leave these here overnight and then i'll also just wipe down this area to kind of clean this up yesterday you guys seriously thank you so much for being here again i am just so grateful for you without you here i would just be some weirdo cleaning her house <laughs> filming herself doing makeovers you know doing all the things but without anyone hanging out with me. So I am just so thankful for this amazing community that we've built here. And if you are not already a part of the family, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below. Next week, we are going to be decluttering my closet and I am getting rid of so many clothes, so many things, we're reorganizing in there, deep cleaning, like doing all the stuff and it looks incredible. So I cannot wait to share that with you guys. And if you're needing some more motivation, I'm going to link this video right here. I don't think you've seen it before, so definitely check it out. Bye guys. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It is that time of year again. We are going to be stepping into our master closet and decluttering. I like to do this about once or twice a year, just depending how often I can get around to it. This time it's actually not as terrible as it has been in the past. Like there have been times where we can't even walk on the floor, but it is feeling very full and very, you know, bulging a little bit. And so I want to go through and just clear things out. I've actually been slowly starting to purchase some new clothes. Some of my old clothes are not fitting anymore in a good way. I've lost about 25 pounds at this point ever since having Hashimoto's it's been a struggle and so I finally kind of found what's been working for me and so this one is pretty exciting to me because I'm actually going to be clearing out some of the clothes that I had purchased during the time when I just wasn't able to make anything work so 
let's go ahead and jump into it. I'm gonna show you a sneak peek of kind of what we're starting with so that we have a good starting point and then we'll start pulling clothes out and just going through them together. I wanna hear you say it. So I actually did this same thing in our kitchen a couple weeks ago now and I got rid of so many things. This year I really feel like things are going to be changing because I've really been working on like kind of changing my shopping habits and just create like a more peaceful life if that kind of makes sense that's just kind of like my overall goal for this year so i'm really excited to kind of get everything how i want it and then just maintain it from here on out we have three different laundry baskets one is for whites one is for colors that get dried and then one is for colors that get hung up we wash them and then we hang them up on this side so we usually don't have clothes hanging here all the time but we did just do a load so i'm gonna go ahead and bring these over just so i can really see like exactly how many things we have over there which is a ridiculous amount but soon we won't i already have my bed cleared off so the way that i like to do this and tackle the whole closet is actually by taking all of the clothes out of the closet i don't do this all at once but i do like segments so i will take all of my shirts out for example go on my bed and then see what fits see what doesn't see what ones i'm just never going for what ones are my favorite things like that and then i'll sort them accordingly and then i'll bring back whatever i'm keeping and then we'll move on to the next section Since this time I have changed up sizing a little bit, this is going to be my keep pile. Like for sure I know these fit or they fit well enough. This is going to be a pile where I need to like retry on things to see if they fit still, things like that. And then obviously I have my baskets for anything that I'm going to be donating. And then I do still have several of like my Christmas items still kind of hanging up in the closet. So I am going to be taking those off the hangers and then just putting those up in my closet because I don't need to be having them for like, you know, 11 or 10 months of, as a year. I'm like a little bit bummed on some of these because usually it's just like, oh, I don't like this shirt anymore, so it's not hard to give it up. But some of these, like, I love this shirt. I tried it on, I don't know, like a week ago, and it was just like really, really baggy, which is a good thing, but it's a little bit bummer, like a bummer to get rid of things that like you're enjoying, but it's okay. You think you know me? Say I'm as cold hearted as they come. Slowly. All right, this is what we have so far. So obviously get rid of these ones I need to try on. These ones I know fit. And then these are just like Christmas ones that I'm gonna keep, but I'm gonna pack up in the closet until next Christmas. So I'm gonna go ahead and try some of these tops on and kind of see where we're at with those. Some of these tops I actually have kept because I liked them and hoped I'd be able to figure out my Hashimoto stuff a little bit better. And so I haven't worn them in a long time because they didn't fit, but like this one fits a lot nicer now. And so I'm actually able to keep it and just start wearing it again. Cold-hearted as they come You think I'm slowly No, no, no Cutting my ties with you that I'm done 
All right, this is kind of where we're landing. So this entire basket is filled, overflowing with clothes that I'm donating. These are all the hangers from all the clothes that we are getting rid of. And then these are the ones that I'm keeping. So there is still like quite a lot in there. I like to declutter them on the bed. And then when I put them back into the closet, it's like I kind of get to go through them really quickly a second time and just make sure that I'm making the choice that like, yeah, I really do wanna keep this. So we have these ones to keep and then these ones to put up in our closet. I'm gonna go ahead and start clearing this out, wiping everything down. Whenever I do a declutter, I always like to kind of semi deep clean the space to kind of check that off my list as well. This pillow I got, it was on sale a long time ago, but it doesn't match the pillows that I have in my bed. So I need to get different covers for my pillows and then I can finally bring this down. But how cute is this? For now, it'll stay up here. This is just a pack and play that we have when my sisters come to visit with their little kids. Some extra shoes up here for the boys. I don't know why we have this, we already have one. Okay, so what I've done is actually hung the clothes, like hung the hangers backwards. Normally you hang them like this. And I do this every time I declutter clothes. That way, whenever I put, I like wash them or wear them, you know, I hang them back up. The ones that I'm using and wearing will be hung up the right way. And in like six months, all these clothes at that point are hung the right way and these ones are still hung backwards. That just shows me like I haven't worn these in so many months and it's time to kind of reevaluate those and most likely declutter them and get rid of them. And then this is the other thing that I was talking about. So now I'm going to order them and organize them in here. And as I'm doing that, I'm going to actually re-go through them a quick second time and just make sure that I'm really intentional about what I'm keeping. <laughs> So I honestly still feel like I have too many for sure, like a lot too many. These are like three quarter length sleeves. And then I have like some nicer clothes, more casual. And then these are actually all t-shirts. I don't wear t-shirts too often. So I'm probably going to go through these and maybe get rid of some that I just like never go for. But I don't know. I've still cut my clothes at least by half. Okay, I found like four t-shirts that I'm going to purge. <laughs> Next, we're going to go through my pants. I do have some jeans in my drawers. So actually, I think a lot of these don't really fit anymore. You guys will have to let me know how do you store your pants. I kind of hate hanging them up. <laughs> I don't know why, but I also feel like it's nice because then you can see exactly what you have and you don't have to dig through your drawers. But if you guys have like a great way to store all of your pants, let me know. The next area of clothes I'm going to go through are Kyle's clothes. Now don't worry, I'm not going to be actually getting rid of his clothes, but what I love to do is go through them. I can see which ones are really worn. I also know the clothes that he wears and grabs for all the time. And so I kind of like pre-sort through things for him and then it's more attainable for him to just to go through it because he's not motivated as much as I am like to just go through these things. It's just not his thing so much. So I'm gonna do that for him and then later on he will go through those things. It just seems to make the process a little bit easier. <laughs> I 
I totally have to laugh because Kyle is definitely the one between the two of us who has a harder time decluttering. I feel like I'm pretty good at being able to let go of things and he definitely holds on a little bit more, but he did decide to get rid of a few of his clothes. But let me know in the comments who in your home struggles with decluttering most. I just want to say I think I won on decluttering things versus Kyle. <laughs> Have this feeling, haven't felt for so long. Took a hold of me and won't let go. I've been sleeping, caught me off. I definitely find it's hard to declutter things that are in great shape. So for example, I was decluttering some of Kyle's church clothes and a lot of these are in great shape, but he typically just wears one set of items. And so I just have to keep in mind if they're not being used, they are no longer useful to us. So it's time to get them out of the house. Plus then it opens up that item to be used by someone else, which is awesome. I need to clear this area down here. We just have random bits everywhere. We have Christmas box things and wrapping paper. This is like an old workout thing that when we were going to do the gym upstairs and you know how that went and then like Kyle's weights, things like that. So all this stuff needs to get cleared out and just put somewhere. We're going to tackle like our towels so the pool towels and then also I just have some extra blankets like throw blankets and pillows in here ones that I really like but that I'm kind of like sorting through but I haven't even accessed them in a while so I'm just gonna see what I can get rid of from here The next thing that I want to do is actually use some of these bins. I've organized with these bins from Target so many times like in our Utah house and our pantry and this house and my sister's homes like just all over the place so anytime we reorganize a space and I don't use them in that space anymore I still hold on to them because I'm like I will use them again I just don't know when yet and today is one of those days so we have three boys they're always bringing home things from school we don't want to keep everything but we do like to keep certain things a lot of times it's like their artwork or different things just kind of get thrown about the house and so i need just like a quick easy place to just stick their artwork into so these are going to be perfect it's not like a permanent solution for them but it's like a great place to just throw them in there when they're something special and then i can like actually reorganize them in a nicer way a little bit later we are making some serious progress in here. We have my whole side pretty much done. We have Kyle's side finished. We just kind of have this random side. This is Kyle's dresser in here. I have my dresses and then we actually do store some random Christmas items that I just don't want to get broken. And so I really don't want to put them in bins. So we just kind of store them in here, but they shouldn't be down here taking like some prime <laughs> real estate. So I am going to move those to up on the very top, top shelf since we don't need to access those and just kind of organize in here a little bit, declutter some. And then a lot of times I don't touch these because a lot of times they're just like keepsake items, things like that but I do just want to open up each bin and just make sure that they are something that we really do want to keep.
does anyone else like lose motivation when you're like three quarters of the way done? I feel like I do that all the time. It's like I'm usually okay in the beginning and then it's like, oh, okay, like I'm good, I'm okay, I don't wanna finish it. But that's the most rewarding part. So we're gonna keep going with this. Here I'm just going through a bunch of self-care items that I've actually gotten from FabFitFun in the past and I am terrible at self-care so I'm just deciding like which ones I'm going to keep and try to use and which ones I'm going to donate but let me know in the comments if you have any suggestions on ways that I can get better at self-care. This thing is like my all-time best keepsake. So this was my big Christmas present when I was like, I think two years old or something. I think my mom said she got it like from the dollar store or something, but I just loved it so much. And so I still have it so that I would just carry it around everywhere. This is my little like wedding bag, I guess, like purse. This is a container of all of the letters that I wrote to Kyle and maybe the ones that he wrote to me, but I wrote him every single day, sometimes twice a day when he was in basic training for the Air Force. So he got this little container and he just has like all these letters and letters and letters that I wrote to him. So I don't even know if we've ever gone back and read those, but it would be really fun and we're definitely going to keep them just so neat from forever ago. Guess I heard it all, all the same, but go ahead and use me. I need it now. I need it now. Conveniently, I <laughs> happened upon these old chalkboard labels. Whenever I need to access anything up here, I have to go through every single bin because I just haven't gotten around to labeling them, so. I'm gonna label them really quick, and then if I have enough, I'll also do the ones down here for the boys. I love when you declutter and immediately find something that you forgot you had, but otherwise would have just went out and bought it anyways. So this is just a great example of how decluttering can seriously save you money. Last thing to do is to vacuum in here. This room does not get vacuumed like very often at all, just being very transparent. But this room, yeah, it gets neglected for sure. So we do have the rug in here. I actually Maybe that'll be one of my goals is to find a different rug in here. This is just the rug that we had and it doesn't really fit any other way than to do it like this. So we kind of liked it, but it's kind of different. But I do want to really vacuum this and like slow vacuum. So I'm going to grab the vacuum and get this nice and clean. And then I'll show you where we landed and what we decluttered. crazy how much this picked up just with like a really quick vacuum so I'm gonna go ahead and empty out this canister and then we're gonna go over it slowly in different directions and really let the vacuum work and just suck up as much as much of that dust and dirt as we can all right we have an empty canister now we'll put it to work just watch me break it I 
talked about slow vacuuming so many times with you guys on my channel in hopes that if you are not already doing this, you go ahead and take the opportunity to do it because it really will make such a huge difference. But something I don't always mention is when you're slow vacuuming, it actually helps if you not only slow vacuum in one direction, but you also slow vacuum in the other direction. And that will also work to pull even more dirt and debris out of your carpets. Just watch me break. I love a good before and after. So let's rewind and check out that before again. As you can see, it is so full and packed full of clothes that either didn't fit or were never getting worn. And now we actually have clear shelves, open spaces, and our closet is only filled with clothes that fit and get worn often, items that we use all the time or genuinely want to keep as keepsake items. And in just a minute, I'm gonna show you how much we decluttered, but I even took this opportunity to reorder organize each space and deep cleaned as I went. In this past week, ever since doing this, we have really enjoyed and actually maintained our clean and decluttered closet. And as promised, this, my friends, is all the stuff that we pulled out and that we will be donating. This whole process actually made me really want to give our closet a makeover with paint and built-ins and all that stuff. But that does remind me that next week we are tackling some house projects. I always love seeing the changes that people make around their house, especially when they're doing it all themselves. So next week's house project video is going to include our DIY desk upstairs and I cannot wait to share how it all turns out. And if you missed my kitchen declutter video that I talked about before, I'm going to be linking it on the right side of the screen. Definitely check it out. It was super motivating. So many of you guys who watched it absolutely loved it and got so much motivation. I hope you enjoyed getting some motivation today and hanging out with a friend and I cannot wait to see you next week in that house projects video. Bye guys. But darling, oh my, my, I'm feeling so fly up in the zone now. Oh. I'm like a golden crown, world and high up in the sky. Oh, it's the way you make me feel so good, feel so good right now. It's the way you make me feel so good. Oh. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be tackling some house projects. We always have a bunch of them. So we picked a few and we're going to continue working on our home here in Arizona. So a few months ago, we actually redid this whole space over here, like this loft living room area. We transformed it and we love this space now. It's so cozy. It's just a place that we love to hang out as a family. But there was one area in this room that we didn't tackle yet and that is this built-in desk. Now, I don't know if we are going to, you know, like add in shelving one day or different things, but for now we're just gonna do this on like a very low budget. We are really just going to be adding cabinet poles to all of the cabinets. We're going to be painting it so it's not this like builder grade oak, and we are going to try to save the counter. So I am going to see if I can sand it down. It looks as though it is hardwood, like real wood. So I'm gonna see if I can just sand it down and then put a poly over it, but we'll kind of see how that goes as the process continues. But the color that we are going to go with is actually the same color that we just used in our bathroom up here. We love the look of it. We used Beyond Paint and the finish looks so professional. We're also gonna use the same hardware and everything. This little medicine cabinet right here, that's another thing that we're going to be working on as well. So anyway, we have a latchia done. Let's go ahead and jump on into this desk makeover. I wanna hear you say it. Okay, so the first thing that I want to do is actually start to clear off the desk and clear out the cabinets. I'm going to see if I can just like kind of push the things that are in the cabinets to the back so that I don't have to actually pull them out only because I'm hopeful that we can get this one done in one day, but you just never know with makeovers. We've done them enough to know that there are probably going to be hiccups and who knows how long those will take. So I'm going to kind of go through all the cabinets and just see if I can push things to the back and get them out of the way, and if not, then I'll go ahead and pull things out. Okay, so our plan of attack on this desk, I'm actually going to take my e-cloth and just wipe everything down. All of the little stoppers that make them not like bang closed, they have basically all disintegrated into like jelly. So you can see like the the piece right here it's just 
kind of jellified, so I'm just scraping that all off. Then I think we're actually going to be sanding here before I paint, just so I don't get like all the sawdust all over the cabinets. But before I paint or sand or do any of that stuff, Kyle is going to be using his hardware jig to put the cabinet poles, or at least like drilling the holes before I paint. That way we don't risk scraping up the new paint once we have it painted. This is my amazing <laughs> way we're gonna do this. This is door one, door two, door three, door four. So we have like the set for one, top, middle, bottom, two, top, middle, bottom, three, top, middle, bottom. And this is going to be going like on the hinge because then we're gonna take the hinges off of everything and then that way we know like which hinges go back. We're so dysfunctional, but still inseparable. So the other day I did look up some different things online to figure out how how to figure out if your countertop or um, built-in furniture or whatever is real wood or not. And from everything I can figure out, this looks and feels like real wood. So if that's the case, then it should be no problem to go ahead and just sand it down. I'm just gonna have to like taper on the edge real good and try not to scuff up the wall. I probably will have to touch up little bits here and there, but fingers crossed that I can sand this down to natural wood and then just poly it nice. We got nothing to lose. I do think it's gonna fail though. Nothing to lose. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see, we'll see how it goes. Maybe it'll be amazing. We'll save a yeah, ton of money. Maybe we just discovered something new. I don't know. I'm gonna Google it. Okay. This is what it was before. This is what it's what it is right now. Kind of just feels like wood. I don't know. But this is only 220, so it's taking a long time to get through like this shiny glossy finish, but we'll just keep going with it, I guess. shocked that that worked. <laughs> it just took a I'm, lot I'm of amazed. sandpaper and some time. That looks awesome. I like it. All right, I did one final sand on this. I feel like I actually got a few of those areas that I was a little concerned about. I got them a little bit nicer looking. Everything is all nice and wiped off and it's just like raw wood. It's I'm so thankful this is working out. So we got some water-based poly. I have only ever used oil-based poly, but I've used water-based stains and I really like water-based. So what I looked up online, water-based poly doesn't yellow. It also dries a lot faster, so you can do more coats in a shorter amount of time, but it doesn't dry like as hard. Keep that in mind if you're using like water-based or oil-based. This is just, you know, a desk upstairs. It's not gonna get like a crazy amount of use, like a kitchen wood or bathroom or, you know, something like that. And so I think this will be good. And the guy at the hardware store actually said that he recommended just a foam brush because it's not gonna leave any paint streaks or anything. So that's what we're gonna do. I 
just need to let this dry for I think two hours and then I'll do a really like soft sand on it. So I'll just sand it with some 220 grit, then I'll do another coat, let that dry, do another sand on it, do a final coat of poly, and then we should be good. But I think since I'm literally just waiting on this, I think I'm gonna go ahead and start painting the cabinets because we're running out of time and I have time to kill now. So this is the paint we're going to be using, but it's called Beyond Paint, and I've used it now in our bathroom. I used it up on a kitchen in Montana at my mom's like apartment up there. It is amazing. It goes on so good. It ends up looking like a professional painted your cabinets. It's also awesome because you don't have to sand anything down. You don't have to strip your cabinets. You don't have to do any of that craziness. We have done that way before when we did our cabinets in our kitchen back when we lived in South Dakota and I never want to do that again. So this stuff is like incredible. And this is in the color Pebble. I think the color is gonna look really good with this like natural raw wood. So I'm gonna go ahead and start on the top cabinets. So this paint, you want to roll as much as you can, but the areas that you can't really roll very good, you don't want to ever brush it. You just want to stipple. So you're gonna take your paintbrush I'm just gonna like stipple it into the crevices and then once I get all that stippled then I'll start rolling everything else. Sun is coming up, are you ready to go? We can take a ride, we can take it slow. Your will is my law, I'ma let you be the boss cause I'll go with you. We have the first coat on up top. We have the second coat of poly on and Kyle's working on this quarter round. Oh yeah, that'll look really nice with that angled cut. Yeah. So like the floor is very uneven right there. Like it's not <laughs> finished. Yeah. So Kyle's just putting a piece of quarter round. It's actually like leftover from when we just did the bathroom. And then he'll attach this just with a rod nailer. Yep. And then um, I'll end up just painting this the same as the cabinet. So it'll look seamless. Yeah. I think that's gonna look so nice. So we have one coat on top and bottom. We have two coats of poly. The water-based one dries so fast, but we're super happy that we left that with like the blonde wood. And then we'll have like the black hardware on it as well. So nice. Multiple coats on top and bottom and multiple coats on the counter. So now we are going to work on the doors, which is like kind of the worst part. Also, it's not really that big of a deal. And there's only six doors, so it's not like we're doing an entire kitchen. So we're gonna lay out the drop cloth and then I have like little plastic cups that we just continue to reuse <laughs> during these kind of projects. And I'll stack those up, lay the cabinet doors, the cabinet fronts, on the cups so that I can get the sides easily and then we'll continue on painting. I think we might actually finish this today.
been very busy <laughs> I put on I don't even know I lost track but maybe like four coats of poly standing in between I have three coats now of paint on the cabinets I have three coats on here I think they're about dry so I'm gonna go ahead and flip the cabinet fronts over do another three coats on the front then we'll let those dry and then we can put everything back together but I'm loving loving how it's looking One heartbeat away from going mad. Girl, when you look like that Close up, close up I'ma get close up to you, yeah Got me, baby Got me hooked on you once again Girl, I hear you How many times do I wanna hear This is my third time, I think, using this Beyond Paint. I have raved about it pretty much every time I've used it because it just goes on so well and it looks really professional. It has super good coverage and it just ends up looking so nice. And it's also very quick and easy to use. I mean, as far as painting your cabinets goes, it's not like a 10 minute project, but it's also not like several days long like most of those kits are. So if you are painting your cabinets, whether it's your kitchen cabinets, bathroom, or you know, kind of a side project like this, I would definitely suggest looking into Beyond Paint. And I personally love this pebble color because it's kind of like the perfect taupe color. I feel like it always comes across more gray on videos, but it's just so versatile. And I feel like it also just goes with so many different design styles. So definitely a favorite of mine. It's the next day, these have been drying overnight. So we have our handy way that we've kind of written down which one goes where. So he's just gonna start attaching those hinges and then we'll get those put back up on the cabinets. Last step, I think, is just to put the hardware on that Kyle already drilled the holes for. And then we also have these clear adhesive pads that we'll put on so that they don't like bump the cabinets and scratch. love how it turned out it looks so nice super modern now we just have to put everything back on and we'll be finished with this project one less thing to do in this house so we have a lot of cords right here and before we go like drilling into the desk because we totally could go that route i do have this box i got it I don't know, like a year or more ago probably. And I've just been wanting to use it as decor, but the point of it is actually to be able to drill out the back of it and then you can put cords in here and you have like, you know, renter friendly cord management, cord management where you don't have to drill holes in anything or anything, you know, attached to the house. So my plan is just to put it right here, probably put the router on top and I think it'll look really nice. Far from 
and here is the after. It's so much cleaner and all the cords are just tucked right into this little container. It looks awesome. Seriously, you guys, this project came together in 24 hours. It is a total transformation, and I love when it's kind of a smaller project like this, but it has such a big impact. Let me know in the comments what you guys think, and also let me know if you guys have kind of a smaller project like this at your house that you've been kind of waiting to tackle. If you do, I would urge you to put it in your schedule and go ahead and tackle it because every little project you do for your home, it really does make a massive difference in just making it feel more cozy and making it feel just more like you and your family. We have definitely experienced that with every house project we've done, big or little. So I'm just a huge advocate for getting all those little projects done. One of the things that makes me so happy we actually tackled this project is several months ago, if you remember, we kind of transformed this hodgepodge area into our loft and this desk area kind of felt like we had forgotten about it. We didn't forget about it, we just didn't have the time to tackle it or we thought we didn't have the time to tackle it and now it just feels like an extension of that room and not a forgotten area. So I just could not be happier about this. It is a new day. We don't have a whole lot that we want to get done today, but we do want to just tackle a few other things that have been sitting, you know, towards the bottom of our to-do list kind of thing that just always get pushed. And so because they don't take a lot of time, we're going to go ahead and tackle them today. One of the things is actually putting some hooks and things like that in our bedroom and bathroom. So I just ordered these on Amazon. We have these in my office and I love them. I love just like the sleek, clean design of them. They're really easy to put up. So we're gonna put this up in our bathroom, one in our bedroom, and we'll just kind of look around and see if there's any other really useful spots to have a coat hook. And then the other thing in here that we wanna do, this is a cute, again, like really simple curtain tie back. So in our bedroom, this is going into our bathroom and we don't have an actual door onto our bathroom. So we are just going to attach this curtain tie back right here and then we can just tuck it away and it'll kind of be out of the way a little bit more. So we're gonna add that. And then we're actually going to head upstairs into the bathroom that we just redid. And I have some rub and buff if you guys haven't used this. Welcome to my world, I actually haven't used it either. However, I've seen it be used so many times. So I finally ordered some on Amazon. This one is gold leaf. I was debating if I should do that or the antique gold, but I went with gold leaf, we'll see how it goes. And I want to actually kind of check out if I can just do use this on the medicine cabinet in there until we're able to take it out and do something a little bit more in depth. But we have the boys' bathrooms coming up those makeovers will be coming up pretty soon. And so I want to kind of figure out exactly what our options are for the medicine cabinet because it's in like every single bathroom here. So anyway, long-winded explanation of what we're doing today, but let's go ahead and get it done. Feeling in my bones, I can feel it in my face. Hands in the sky, I can feel the winds of change. You live and you learn, and I hope I've seen. 
We have wanted to add these hooks right by our bedroom door and also in our bathroom for quite a while. But of course, since it's one of those smaller tasks on our to-do list, I feel like those just tend to get pushed further and further down your to-do list because it feels like those bigger projects tend to just get precedence and kind of feel a little bit more important. So it felt really good to actually get these up on the wall. And now that we've actually had them up on the wall, it's just been so convenient. It took us literally five or 10 minutes to do this. And I'm really wishing we would have just made this happen a lot earlier, but I'm not complaining. We got it done and that's that. But also if you spy in my closet, you might think it's looking pretty nice. Or at least if you saw the before, you're definitely noticing it's looking a lot nicer than it did a few weeks ago. So recently I did a massive declutter in our closet and I ended up getting rid of like half of my clothes and it has just felt so nice in there. It's felt really peaceful and calm and it's not overwhelming. It's just actually like a positive experience to walk in our closet. So if you haven't seen that video yet, go ahead and watch that one next and you will get a ton of decluttering motivation and tips as I just take you along through that process. We got everything done. Like I said, it was only gonna take a few minutes, but it will be nice. We've been wanting to get this done for a long time. So we have the hook over there when we walk in the door. We have a hook in here and then this tie back, which will be super handy. While I have you guys here, I wanted to get your opinion on our bedroom. So coming up is going to be our master bedroom. So I'm gonna turn you around and kind of give you my plans. And then you can give me your thoughts and we can all come up with the best way to do this room. Okay, so this is the entry into our bedroom. We got this furniture. I love it that it's like so sturdy, but it's not <laughs> really our style anymore. It's definitely more like modern farmhouse. It works so great and we really love it other than the style of it. So I'm thinking to see if I can maybe just paint this, like paint the bed frame and you know, maybe do something different with the side tables. So let me know your thoughts on that. Like if you would go more like a taupe color on the bed frame or do black. But my thoughts on this area is to do some shelving and maybe just do kind of like a plant wall. And then on this back wall that goes into the bathroom, I have wanted to do one of those angled walls. And that is one thing that will definitely be more intense of a design that you might get tired of. So I'm kind of wondering if we should do just maybe like vertical slats along here. Let me know your thoughts on that and also let me know like what you guys think about the wall color and the bed color. It's finally about time to do it and <laughs> I'm like totally lost because now at this point I've gotten like so many ideas that I don't know like what direction I wanna go in and we didn't just jump on it and get it done. So anyway, let me know kind of what you guys think. I'm kind of leaning towards like the vertical wood wall, accent wall thing. And I want to almost make it like a little bit moody. However, we do have dark floors. And so I don't want it to feel like a dark space. I want it to be still light and airy, but I wouldn't mind having like a moodier accent wall. Let me know what you guys think and we'll get it done. It'll turn out really good. But now that we have everything done in here, let's go ahead and jump upstairs to the bathroom and see if this rub and buff can like temporarily fix the little medicine cabinet situation. If you saw our recent bathroom makeover, you know that this used to be lime green. I'm not even joking. It was terrible and it was just builder grade everything and we really just like customized it and neutralized it a lot. But one of the things that we didn't tackle in here is this medicine cabinet. So eventually we do want to take the medicine cabinet out. We want to take it out of this bathroom, our son's bathrooms, like all the bathrooms I think, but we're going to have to maybe frame it out and then put wooden shelves inside or I'm not sure exactly what we're gonna do, but we just didn't have the time to do it in the makeover. So like I said, I ordered some rub and buff and this is just from Amazon, but it's nice because it actually gave you little applicators. They come in like lots of different shapes and sizes and that'll just make it nice to be able to go ahead and like get into all the little nooks and crannies. But before I do that, I do want to tape it off so that I don't get the rub and buff on the actual mirror itself. I just want to get it only on the trim. I don't know if this is like paint where you have to like build on it, but the first layer is not looking good. I'm also not loving the shade. I was going between the gold leaf and the antique gold, and I think I like the other, like the antique gold. So I know Michaels has it. So I'm gonna run 
get that and see if that will be any different. I just got back from Michael's and I picked up the antique gold ribbon buff, but I'm kind of wondering if you build on this a little bit. And so before we left, I just went around the mirror and put like one layer of it on. I did have to sand down with 100 grit sandpaper and that kind of gave it something to attach to. You can kind of see like it is splotchy, but actually it's going better than it was at first. So now I'm just gonna take the antique gold because I don't feel like that's really quite what I'm wanting. I've seen this done so many times on picture frames, so I am going to do it on this picture frame just a little bit, like in these little like intricate detail marks, just to add a little gold on this top part and like along the whole edge. This rubbin buff stuff was definitely giving me a run for my money. It was like such a struggle to get it to adhere to the mirror at first. But once I ended up sanding it down a little bit, just to kind of give the mirror frame that rougher texture and something for the rubbin buff to hold on to, it ended up going on pretty nicely and then it did build over time. So I think I ended up doing like two, three coats over the whole thing. And the finish does look really, really pretty. I was definitely a bigger fan of the antique gold versus the gold leaf. It just had that that aged look that definitely just kind of matched the style and aesthetic of that bathroom so eventually we definitely do want to take out this medicine cabinet altogether maybe put in some shelves or something but for now this looks way better at least in my opinion but you guys will have to let me know what you think and as always thank you so much for hanging out today if you're not subscribed make sure you subscribe down below and i will see you in the next one bye guys Just for it's the funny shot. With this stool. We had to keep carrying the stool to put these on. Yeah. Carry everything out. Carry it all back in. <laughs> the silliness. The silliness. Look out, here she comes The woman that I love It's too bad she'll never know Yeah, I can't tell her how I feel Because she has someone who makes her happy Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, I am so happy you clicked on this video today. My name is Amanda, by the way. Hey. I share lots of cleaning and homemaking videos as well as home makeovers on my channel, but today's video is meant to be a tad bit faster paced to give you that boost of raw cleaning motivation in a short amount of time so you can take just a few minutes with me, see all that I'm getting done, and take that motivation for yourself in whatever you have to do today. I have to say, I'm usually fairly chatty in my videos, but today we're trying something new and I'll only be popping in a few times throughout this cleaning video for maximum motivation. Also, I would love to hear your feedback on what you think about this cleaning montage style video 
or if you prefer my typical ones that I share each week, or maybe you like a little mix of both, let me know in the comments. And also I did want to invite you to subscribe to my channel if you are not already. And now let's continue on with the cleaning. I hope you guys are in need of some serious motivation today because that's exactly what you're going to get. Let's do this. She won't be mine I listen when she talks I watch her when she walks She's given me these feelings That I've never felt before But she will never know That I love her so well She's with somebody else And I will have to let her go She will never know, na na Never know, na na She Like she stole my heart Without knowing she did But I guess that it will pass Yeah, I can't be the only one Who got lost inside the blue of those eyes I've gotta let her go I know it won't be easy I wanna hold her close Try, try as hard as I can Cause she'll never be mine I listen when she talks I watch her when she walks She's giving me these feelings That I've never felt before She will never know That I love her so She's with somebody else And I will have to let her go Did you ever stop and think why well, spend too much time just getting ready? Let me be honest, I don't know a single thing that I haven't done to make you notice me. Let me be real here. When I see you, my heart starts racing, but I don't know if I like this chasing and playing and waiting around. It's a shame that my hands start shaking all of the time when you're around me. But this time, this time, girl, I know what's bothering me. I need somebody to love. Oh, na 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 na. Don't you see what's wrong with me? I need somebody to love. Oh, oh na na. I don't. I try to clean our living room and kitchen every single night so that I can start out the day on the right foot. So on this night, I was just working towards accomplishing that, but I was actually hoping to take advantage of the evening and work on some other projects that I just hadn't been having time for during the day. Let me know if you guys are like me and would rather stay up late to get caught up, or would you rather wake up early to get things done that you're not able to during the rest of the day? I am like the worst morning person in the world, so it's 100% nighttime for me. Hey 
guys, it is a new day or a new night <laughs> rather. Last night I just got so tired and it was just too late to really be productive, getting done everything that I needed to. So as you saw, I got a really good start with everything last night. I would have loved to have been able to tackle everything that I wanted to last night earlier in the day today, but I had a ton of things to do and I just didn't get around to things. So it's okay, I have a new night and tonight we are going to get everything else done. I have already started kind of our nighttime routine, closing down the house, the kitchen is pretty much clean. I want to clean our fridge out, not like a full on deep clean or anything, but just kind of reorganize in there, wipe some things down. And then I also just want to prep out a few things that I have kind of laying in around in there and that way they won't, you know, go to waste. And then I also want to tackle my office. That has been one of the things that's just been on my list and keeps getting bumped to the next day and the next day. So I'm going to take some time and tackle it tonight. And then I also want to kind of reset our guest room because we've actually had Kyle's dad staying with us for the last month. And so I haven't had a chance to get in there since he's been gone and just to kind of refresh everything in there, get the bedding put back on. So we're gonna do that tonight as well. And then I also want to tackle these floors. I love on camera how everything just looks wonderful, but in real life, like when you get up close, it is just not the case. So we're gonna give these floors a little bit of love. If you're like me and you like to clean at night and tackle things at night, I hope this video has been giving you some motivation. And let's go ahead and continue on. Every day I'm looking for a way to return To the time when everything was easy to learn Don't know when it started to get so serious Building up an illusion of a world full of trust Moving on When everything's gone to be strong confusion in my mind no way to turn back time my soul in need of remedy don't even know the enemy when i feel out of touch can't seem to get enough hiding away from everyone i don't know where i'm coming from it feels like it never happened maybe just a dream This felt so nice to just take a half hour to prep out some produce and clean out our fridge. It really didn't take a long time, but it was definitely time well spent.
The last thing I wanted to tackle in our home on this night was just to work on the floors. They were definitely in need of a little TLC. So to vacuum the carpets, I was using my Shark Vertex Ultra. That cordless vacuum works so incredibly well. It has really good suction for a cordless vacuum. And I also love that it can bend halfway through. So you don't have to bend over when you're vacuuming under beds and couches and all that stuff. And then to vacuum and mop the rest of our hardwood floors, I'm using the new Roborock Diet Pro. I got this about one or two months ago and I have loved it so much. I just love it more and more every time I use it. I love it for a lot of reasons. They've actually made a lot of great improvements from the previous version, but it's just so convenient that it vacuums and mops my floor at the same time. I think they've had a little bit of a hard time keeping it in stock because you guys keep selling it out, but I will have a link for both of these down below. I highly recommend both of them. Thanks so much for spending time with me today and if you need some more motivation or want to hang out a little bit longer, click on this video on the right side of the screen. I have a feeling you're going to love it and I cannot wait to see you guys right back here next week for a brand new video. There might even be a bonus one this week so stay tuned. Bye! Welcome back to my channel. I have a little different scenery behind me because I'm actually up in Montana again at my mom's house. Today we are going to be tackling her walk-in pantry. We're going to be painting in here, getting it a really nice backdrop, and then we are going to make her space work for her, not against her. I have so many plans for this space. I'm really excited to take you guys along with me on this new pantry makeover. I wanna hear you say it. So pay attention to this before every shelf is piled, the floor is hard to see and walk on, and there's really no rhyme or reason to this space, but all of that is about to change. And the first thing that I wanted to change right away is the light bulb, not to a daylight bulb because that can feel kind of cold, but I am going to make this space a little bit more neutral by adding a natural light in here that won't make everything quite so yellow. So I wanted to start out by emptying the pantry completely out. That way we can go through everything and also clear it out so that I can start painting in just a bit. In this room, here's the pantry like right there. So we're actually moving it into this room right next to the kitchen. As I'm doing that, my mom's actually in here like sorting things out, finding anything that's expired, anything that she's not going to eat, she's going to like give to my brother or donate and then everything else like we're just kind of organizing it'll just make our process or like the process a little bit easier as we go
Here is our current update. We have the pantry completely emptied from top to bottom. I do still have to clean in there, so I'm gonna wipe down all the shelves, then we will get to painting. But first, I wanna show you kind of where we're at. All right, in here, we have all of the food. My mom's still kind of going through things, like this is a pile of things that like have been expired. This is like some food storage items glass items, mostly grain items, all the cans. The pantry has overflown onto the counters. This is why we really even need to go in the pantry because like there hasn't been room to put this stuff in the pantry. We are not only going to be organizing and changing up this pantry, but we are going to get all this food that's all good and that she still wants to use and keep back in the pantry. We are also going to give her her countertops back. I was telling my mom, I totally see how this stuff happens because especially when, you know, you change up your diet, things like that, and you know, life just happens and you just kind of have to deal with it. You get a lot of extra things in here and then it just gets buried. And then, you know, like she has three cases of these from Costco of these pineapples because the other ones were buried in there. Like she didn't know she had them. And so it just happens so easily, but this is going to really motivate her to be cooking the things that she wants to cook. She's not gonna be over buying things because she'll know what she has and it's just going to be so much different going forward. So I'm so excited for her, but let me show you. This house was built 20, almost 20 years or something like that. And these shelves look like it. So that's why I'm going to go ahead and paint the shelves. And I'm also going to get rid of this yellow color back here just to something more neutral and kind of more inviting. Now before we can start actually painting, I of course had to vacuum the shelves and the floors and also take a few minutes just to wipe down the shelves as best I could. That way I wouldn't be painting over any of the dirt and grime and we would just have a clean and clear space to start with. I am for sure going to be painting the shelves because there are divots out of it. It just has like a decent enough amount of wear. However, if you are not painting, like you don't need to paint your walls or you don't have to paint your shelves because you don't have like divots like that. If you use a magic eraser, and actually this is just the Walmart brand magic eraser. It's not even like the super tough one or the name brand, but this could actually get your shelves and things like that way, way cleaner if you aren't planning to paint. Finally, we are ready to paint and we are using da -da -da -da, Benjamin Moore Pale Oak, of course. So it's going to give some warmth in here, but it's also just going to be very light and it will be like the perfect backdrop. I am actually going to start painting around the edges. My mom is going to tape off like around this area so that these beautiful wood posts don't get covered up by paint and then I'll just be rolling as much as I can. Up 
so I feel like this color totally looks white by comparison to the yellow that was previously on the wall, but it really is more of a light stone color. And I honestly just feel like this color is the perfect backdrop to almost any space. We have this color all throughout our house. We have used this in one of my sister's homes and just kind of all over the place. It's perfect if you wanna add a little warmth to your space, but not go too warm. I feel like it's the perfect middle ground between going for fully white walls and going for a tan or a beige color. And I feel like it just makes any wall feel so much more fresh and clean. All right, we have most everything trimmed out um, and cut in, like the bottom's cut in, the door's cut in, and then I've kind of trimmed out along those corners. And my mom is just finishing like taping off these areas. So while she's doing that, I think I'm gonna go ahead and start rolling and then we're really, really gonna see that difference. It's the best part. Got the feeling from the start. You might be the guy who break my heart. Hello. Hello. Even though I took a risk, it is worth the while for just one kiss. I know. I just know it. Caught up in the moment. Wanna spend every second with you. I love how this color is turning out in my mom's pantry and I also love how it looks like I painted this pantry in a very short amount of time when in reality it took a majority of the day but I didn't really mind spending the time painting in here because I did get to spend that time with my mom and this whole makeover was just a fun memory of spending the week with my mom and getting to actually help her in her home. still have to do this top row and then up there in the ceiling and then I will have to do like some extra layers probably just on the shelves but it's looking so good it is a new day we have the pantry all painted it looks so much better it looks actually like very custom and just new and fresh and i love that we did the shelves and the wall the same color because then i think the star of the show is really just going to be like all the containers and all the food itself and not be a distraction with too much going on in here and then i do love these like wood posts that we left bare wood it's just so pretty in here. Next, we are going to grab some containers that we found at like TJ Maxx the other day. And I'm going to kind of start sorting them in here and laying them out in a way that kind of makes sense for, you know, my mom's cooking and everything. Then we'll actually come in here and start bringing some of the food and putting them into the containers. Okay, I wanted to go over the containers that we got so far. I am gonna have to go get like some airtight containers and we may have to go back and get different ones. Some of these may not work, so I am going to leave the tags on until we decide like, Yes, they are gonna work great for the space. And I will say TJ Maxx, Home Goods, Marshalls, all those places are really a great spot to start when you are starting with a blank slate and you need like organization, whether it's in your bathroom, your pantry, your kitchen, whatever, their prices are just really good. So I got, I think eight of these ones, two of these little baskets you can hang it on your shelf like that and all of a sudden you're using some vertical space underneath the shelf that you normally would not have been using. We did get two of these really pretty wicker baskets, some Lazy Susans. These are going to make your corners so useful. Now these are actually for water bottles. These are going to be set side by side and they're going to hold her 
like potatoes, sweet potatoes, onions, things like that. She currently has like all of her spices on her counter, but it's taking up a lot of prime real estate in the kitchen. And she, you know, like all of us, you really only go for your favorite ones most of the time. So the rest of them are actually going to move into her pantry, which is still really convenient to the kitchen but we are going to make them really easy to see. So I got these, last but not least, I got these little plastic gray bins. Now these are the only ones with like kind of a color. I know, they're neutral, but I wanted to keep things pretty simple in here and we will be adding labels and stuff like that on at the end. Anyway, those are the things we got. Now let's go ahead and put them up on the shelves. So this is just tentatively kind of how I have it laid out. And then up here, I plan to mostly have the clear airtight containers up there, just so they're really easy to see and reach. But now we're gonna go ahead and just start actually loading some of these food items into the bins and kind of see where we land. is the perfect example of why it really pays to have your space organized. I know she would not have bought like, you know, 10 garbanzo beans or 10 kidney beans or 10, you know, whatever of all of these. And they're all different brands. So it's not like she got all of them from Costco at the same time, but it's like she would think, oh, I need some beans. I don't have any more. I can't find any, you know, where they normally are because they're somewhere lost in the pantry. So now it'll be great because she honestly is probably gonna save a ton on groceries the next few months because she'll be able to see exactly what she has. Now, I'm not in love with the way this is looking. I feel like it looks a little bit cluttered. I did find a really nice can organizer at Walmart. I could actually use these for something else, which might be nicer, but good to try. And we'll kind of see where we land. But now we're just gonna continue on like filling up the baskets and all that stuff. Whenever I'm doing a pantry makeover, I love using clear containers so everything you have can be seen at a glance. Now the reason I love doing that is because I feel like that makes you more motivated to cook and prepare food and also it's a lot easier to meal plan and not overbuy things when you go to the store because you can just easily and quickly see everything you have. I have done so many pantry makeovers in the past, and if you've seen a lot of those, you will know that I will often opt for a wall can organizer, just because then you're able to utilize that unused vertical space. However, my mom didn't have a great wall or door to hold the vertical organizer, so these can organizers were about $15 from Walmart, and they work so, so well, and they look really nice too. It is a new day once again. <laughs> Yesterday, like I was hoping to get a lot more done, but we were kind of all over the place. We got a late start. We had to run out and run some errands. Like 
we just didn't get to as much as I was hoping for. But I think today we can actually go ahead and finish everything up. I had ordered some labels, so those just arrived. And I don't really feel like we're waiting on anything else. We did pick up the items that we needed. Late last night I put the can organizers in and I love how those look. I feel like they look so much more put together. And now we're just gonna kind of put it all together. So let's not chat any longer. Let's just get it done. It's a crisp zero degrees outside <laughs> with like wind chill, which feels even colder. It is pretty rough here. I should have kept you close, I should have held you tight because in my book you were my favorite chapter. These Better Home and Garden airtight containers are hands down my favorite airtight containers I have ever tried. They are budget friendly and really high quality. I actually have these same exact ones in my own pantry. They work super well and they have held up for years and they also come in lots of shapes and sizes so you can definitely find ones that will work for you. And as always, everything that I use will be linked down below in the description box. And if there's something that you can't find a link for that you're wanting to use in your own home, definitely leave a comment and I will do my best to let you know where that came from or find a link for you. I'm just going to use some post-its. I'm actually going to tear them in half just because I don't need the whole post-it. And then I'm going to just write like what kind of things are going to store in them and make sure that we have it set up a good way. I am feeling like a little bit overwhelmed and I wanted to share that because if you are doing your pantry or you're organizing a different space, it can feel overwhelming before you kind of get into the flow of things and especially this isn't my pantry and so I'm just having to do what I know but what will work for her. I would just say like if you're starting to get into funk in a certain area, move on to something else. I was kind of unsure where to go with the rest of the food for a minute so I was like okay I know what shelf is going to work well for the appliances so I did that and then I'm like okay next I know that these three baskets were meant to go right here. They are going to have things like granola, just things that she has all the time, but like we're not going to decant into a container. They're just going to go in their original packaging in a basket. So continue the process, but don't just stay in one area if you're starting to feel overwhelmed or really unsure. Just move on to something else and it will all come together. But it takes patience, so don't feel like that's, you know, a totally unrealistic thing. That's just how it goes. So now with this, she'll be able to just pull it down, pick through whatever granola she wants. But because she doesn't always buy the same granolas and she has, you know, different ones, this way we don't need to like decant everything, but it's just really easy for her to pull a whole basket down and they'll stay organized within the basket versus just having these sitting on the shelf. Kind of stuck from here I'm not entirely sure what she has that I would like to put in this one so again we're just going to move on and I'm going to actually reorganize these cans <laughs> down here she has a ton of the same ones that is definitely unintentional it was just because the pantry was so disorganized before so this entire top row is garbanzo beans so instead of taking up all of that space I'm actually going to have a bin on the floor all the excess is going to go on the floor and for the first while she is just going to know before she goes to the store because she's out of garbanzo beans or whatever it might be she needs to shop her pantry which is going to be the bottom of her pantry for the moment and you know like then she can restock from there so that's what we're going to kind of reorganize right now I 
I want to wash all of these containers out. We just want to get like all that plasticky smell out nice and sanitized before we start putting our own food in there. So I'm going to take these and just go rinse them out in the sink real quick. And then once they're all dry, we'll start decanting things, which is like one of my favorite spots or favorite parts of doing a pantry. Lazy Susans are the perfect thing to put in a corner of your pantry. Now, since my mom does have these posts on the corners, that makes it a little bit trickier to get into these areas. I'm only adding in the extra foods that she won't be grabbing for all the time. And I'm going to be using the other parts of the pantry as the prime real estate for the items that she's going to be grabbing every day. Even in my wildest we actually ended up decluttering some of my mom's spices that she were either out of date or she just never went for. But we are going to put some teas on the other spice rack. That way she can like always see what ones they are because they'll be tiered. But it's just going to be a good way to kind of store them and also display them so she'll actually be able to use them. In one of these bins, we're actually going to put basically anything that we're not going to be decanting or things like obviously not cans. But whenever you are putting items into bins and baskets, you really want to make sure that you're categorizing them. So if we just put, you know, a bunch of randomness in here, you're never going to go into here and access it and a lot of the food's going to go to waste. Instead, we are going to make one that's all pasta, one that might be baking items, one that might be breakfast items. This one that we're actually going to work on is actually going to be items that are just really quick and easy to make. We're just going to start filling up these baskets but being very intentional with what we're putting in there so that you kind of know what to expect when you go in each basket. This bin is going to be filled with basically all the extra flours like spelt flour, coconut flour, tapioca flour, all those random flours and sugars we're going to put in this bin. Okay, so for these two bins, we are going to have one for breakfast and one for dinner. Now, because we are going to decant some of the items into the containers, those clear containers we washed, we washed earlier, I'm not sure if we're going to have enough to actually fill up one of the whole bins for breakfast. So we might have some overflow. So you can actually put a container or a bin within a bin to kind of continue narrowing it down more a little bit. And so that way, like we have, you know, all the breakfast stuff in here and then we can have, you know, some convenience things in this section. And then this will be more like pasta and grains and things like that.
mom is making a big lunch, a big salad. This is what I'm always talking about in my videos, how she adds a ton of stuff onto the salad. So super yummy. One thing to keep in mind when you're making over your pantry is you do not need to decant everything. I would really only suggest that you decant things that you use regularly and that you always purchase the exact same item every single time. So for example, a few of the items that we're decanting are things like flour, oats, coconut flakes, things like that. Another thing I wanted to mention, if you have things like oatmeal, cream of wheat, where you need instructions, I literally just cut them off from the bag or box and you can either tape them on the back, underneath the lid or something, just so that you have those instructions really easy and accessible. And the other thing is if you're worried that you're not going to use up the item before it expires, you can just write with like a dry erase marker on here what the expiration date is and then you'll always know when it's going bad. My mom actually shared with me that she has always thought decanting items into containers looked so pretty, but really felt it would be unrealistic and less convenient to do that. But now that she has lived with her pantry for a few weeks, she's actually messaged me and said it's really made things way more convenient. She can see exactly what she has and how much of it, and it's just more inviting for her to cook with those items. So she is definitely a fan of decanting items now. So if you have kind of felt that same way, I would urge you to try it out only on the things, like I said, that you use all the time and repurchase regularly, but it really does make a big difference and it is totally realistic. So one thing we got is this cute little basket and since my niece and nephews come over to my grandma, not my grandma's house, to my mom's house, to their grandma's house, she just wanted to have like a fun little snack bin for them. So we are going to put this on this little corner shelf right here. It kind of fits perfectly and we're just going to fill it with some little goodies we got the other day. almost done in here and it's looking incredible it feels so good my mom and i were just looking at like the before pictures and it's quite a difference now so i did order some labels with these little plaques i guess basically ones that you can put on like any of the bins and containers like that So 
for those clear containers, I got this pack. They're like Avery round two and a half diameter labels and you just go on your computer, type it up. So if you don't have a Cricut or something, you can make your own labels this way. The ones they have on there are so pretty and like colorful. However, the printer we have is just black and white, which is totally fine. So we are just going to do some black wording and that way we'll know exactly what is in like each of these containers and then also these powders and things like that as well. So we're gonna get working on labels and finish this up. These labels were super easy to make. It cost like $8 or something for a pack that did her entire pantry and we ended up having a few extras as well. And all you need is a computer and a printer and you can make your own labels as well. So definitely something to check out if you're wanting to make really custom labels but you don't have a Cricut. Do you remember that before the pantry was even spilling into the kitchen and on her kitchen counters and there was just no organization at all. And now that could not be further from where we landed. Everything is completely transformed. She has gained multiple countertops back in her kitchen because we were able to put everything back into the pantry where it belongs. Now everything looks beautiful. It's aesthetically pleasing and very welcoming to come into this beautiful space. We started out by giving it a fresh coat of paint and making everything match and be very neutral in here so that your eyes can really be focused on the food, which is what a pantry is all about. I love that everything has a place. Everything has a home and it feels very, very organized in here. From the wicker baskets that store the items that we didn't decant, we have all of that organized can storage now. We even have four Lazy Susans to make all of those corners very useful. We added in those tiered spice racks to hold all of her extra spices and herbal teas. Now all of her powders are right in front of her and easy to find and accessible. And all of her daily food is decanted into those airtight containers and every Everything is so beautifully labeled and there's even a designated space now for her appliances and overflow and that is something that I feel is often overlooked but very important in pantries to make them kind of life proof and not something that's going to be messy within a week or so. This pantry is now so functional and it really helped give motivation for us to tackle other areas of her home while I was in Montana and I know that whenever you organize and declutter a space it can do the same for you. So if you have a pantry that's kind of looking out of place that doesn't have a lot of organization that is a great place to start because it can be a smaller project it doesn't usually take a whole ton of money or a whole lot of time and you can completely transform it i believe in you you definitely can i hope you guys really enjoyed this video and got lots of tips and ideas from watching if you want to see some of my other makeovers that i've done on the channel and there are a ton of them definitely check out this video on the right side of the screen i will link it right here and make sure that you are subscribed to my channel if you're not already that way you don't miss out on all the future videos that we have coming up. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today and I will see you in the next one. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>